Hi friends, welcome again. At this point, we want to look into leadership and also look at theories underlining leadership. Okay, so we'll split this also into two sections, one section at this point. And then we'll look at the second aspect in the next one. All right. So leadership is very important. We've seen what what um, management is. We're getting things done through people. Leadership is more influencing people to do things. Okay, so one is more like leading, okay, and one is more like getting involved, okay, management, getting involved, pull it, pushing them from behind. The other one is leading them ahead, okay, all right. So we've seen what leadership means, influence others to do what I want them to do, okay, what you want them to do. You are the leader, okay, so it deals with more human interaction, relate with them, talk to them. Of course, you can use force if if you think that's the best way but i like i said i would normally go for persuasion negotiation okay interaction either way you still will have to be interacting with humans so why not use the the humane approach okay the the human approach let me put it that way so leadership is more motivate them influence them inspire them okay and how do you inspire people communication plays a key role okay we look at type of leaders. We have the charismatic. People have some special traits. They pull you along. Special personality that sets them apart from the rest. Traditional from the social order. Custom from practice. I know that once the CEO is not there, I serve as the interim head, okay, or to lead, okay. And again, we also have situations, situational leadership, okay. For situational leadership, it talks of where the influence can only be effective by being in the right place at the right time. So you find yourself um, in a situation as a medical doctor, people are always, let's say at that point, people will not have the expertise and you get there by virtue of your position and you having the knowledge in, in, in medicine or in healthcare, you instantly lead them on to hire to, to some, some good grounds in terms of health practice, okay? Um, again, it also happens. Sometimes you get to the to the workplace, nobody is there, and, and it behoves on you to lead the direction, to lead them. So, situational types of leaders are also in, are also there, being in the right place at the right time. Okay. Now we have the appointed where we directly appoint them. Okay. Normally we're talking of position status. Okay. It's more a bureaucratic type of leadership where we talk of legitimate being offered to someone by virtue of his role, his position, for the organizational structure. And then we have functional, doing what they want to do and doing it well, effectiveness, okay? So it's quite important. We could also have the situation where we secure this position because I do it well. I'm, I'm, I'm doing my work well. So once the, the position comes up, we know this guy is best fit for the role, okay? We're going to take the kinds of um, leadership um, theories, okay? But if you go through the text, you see we are being you, you find benefits of leaders. What what do leaders do? They reduce employee dissatisfaction as one of the benefits. They create the team spirit. They foster team spirit. They help us to speak the same language, and they also encourage effective delegation of both authority and responsibility. Okay, and they also help us to develop confidence in the group, develop the skills, which helps to foster team spirit. Coming to the same area of functionalism effectiveness and try to grow the organization and also leaders help to enlist support cooperation from people outside the group into the group okay so they can always tend to solicit um, support from outside to help support the group within okay skills that leaders should always possess in fact personal skills is very important negotiation skills is very important the ability to influence somebody positively is very important and so also, the ability for you to understand humans and how they react, how they work, how to aspire, inspire them on, to motivate them is very important. And also, the ability for you to act, um, to act in such a way that you develop a conducive environment for humans to work in is also very important. Let's go to the theories. We'll look at the personality traits or quality, which I've just mentioned, of a leader, okay? They should have all those skills, those traits, inspire, motivate them, be able to foster team spirit. Now let's look at the styles. 
We look at McGregor's theory X and Y, Lewin's theory Blake and Morton. Now we look at contingency or situational theories are there and Felder, and then Bernie's transformational theory. Okay, now let's kick start. Now, what about the personality trait? Okay, the personality trait. You would have heard this um, notion that leaders are some leaders are born and they are not made. You might have heard of that, right? So of course. It can sink. It, it can make a lot of sense, okay? But we want to always ensure that leaders possess the requisite skills, traits, okay? The qualities, okay? Not the skills, the qualities, the traits, okay? So the physical traits, the drive, the energy, the appearance to move, to edge things on. Some people, you see them, you know these are leaders because they talk with confidence to the extent that you will move even when you don't want to move, okay? We also have, need to have some personality traits adaptability enthusiasm having the self-confidence okay and also social traits where you can easily co-mingle okay you talk with courtesy administrative tact sitness okay so these are all traits that we always want to see in a leader okay so we would have heard that term like i said it results in what we say leaders are born not made but of course, we can make leaders, okay? I don't think anyone is. Of course, some people are born leaders, but naturally, you see, these people are leaders. Regardless of the level of understanding, they can always lead people on and cause organizations to, to, to achieve their best objectives. There are styles of theories, okay? Style theories. We have the style theories, okay? Now, the style theories is looking at the various leadership styles, that a successful leader will exhibit in, a, in the form of their, their pattern, their social behaviors, okay? How do they portray this in terms of gaining confidence of those they want to lead on, okay, to get the followership, okay? Now, it is always difficult for us to, to define or difficult to measure what this style is. People use different kind of styles. Remember, you are a leader in your home leader in your class leader in in your community by virtue of the fact that you are even educated not everyone has gotten that privilege to get educated to this level you are a leader in one way or the other but how do you exhibit this how do you use this okay we have the autocratic okay and sometimes you hear the the term authoritarian style for them they are the ones who will say do this no negotiations do this okay Complete control, imposing it on the group, not asking for somebody's idea or opinion. Do it. They are the guys who tend not to trust the members of the group. Okay, the the many cases it leads to the resentment. Autocracy is not something you would like. Okay, but there are times where it is necessary, like in the military, obey before complain. At the end of the day, they are looking at safeguarding human lives. Okay. And then we have the democratic, where they say, let's work together, participatory, okay? So democratic style or the participative style is say, let's work together, open discussion between the leader and the group. So he solicits ideas from the group. The group also brings in what they know. There's more or less give and take. And at the end of the day, it helps in bringing out the, the innovation, the creativity, the, everyone is bring, bringing his or her ideas on board, okay? quite important today we always would like to work in a situation where there is a democratic or participative style because it brings out your knowledge your intuition your 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 contribution at the end of the day you can claim that i helped in supporting this or i helped in creating this then we have the free reign you go and sort your problem no direction given to you go and do it on your own okay it helps sometimes you end up bringing out something, okay, something that will help you think outside the box, creativity, okay. It is more or less the delegative style, okay. But with this style, sometimes if you don't take it, someone will go in and, and create a mess. Even though it helps to foster creativity on their own, someone can end up creating a mess. It can also lead to resentment within the group if care is not taken, like the autocratic style, okay. Because if you're giving me a job and I'm, I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with that clear card direction. I would, and I go and mess up, the next time I wouldn't like to do it. Okay. So that's a free reign. That's a free reign. Now, we also have McGregor's theory X and Y. Okay. 
McGregor's theory X and Y, Douglas McGregor, he, he was he he's more of um, an independent style, leadership ability. And he's saying that managers have been studied over time and realized that different approaches emerge. Okay. Now he's based on a scale, theory X, two extremes, assumptions. Okay. What he says is that theory X contends that human beings do not like work. And they will avoid it if they if they can. Sounds true, right? Some human beings. And then theory Y, on the other hand, says that people will work and they will discipline themselves if they can see they are going to achieve something. Okay, those are the two extremes. But again, theory, theory X managers tend to have some conception or misconception. I don't want to I don't know whether it is a conception or a misconception. Now they claim. Theory X, managers claim that employees are basically lazy. They have an inherent dislike to work. They, they would like to avoid work. Okay. Um, so you, you see this normally applied to public sector workers, thinking that, especially in, 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 in developing worlds, where they think public sector workers are just dragging. They are just lazy. They're just dragging the job of the public on the floor. Okay. Again, Theory X, managers believe that employees prefer to be directed instead of uh, in, to be directed and wish to avoid responsibility. So let me know what to do so that when I mess up, I say that, well, you asked me to do it this way. And then again, they also think that employees need constant supervision and direction because they don't want to own up. They want to take up the goals. Okay. Again, they also believe that employees have relatively little ambition. And, and, and less security above anything else. So they are just content with where, where they are. And they also think that employees are indifferent to organizational needs. They don't care what you want to achieve. They are always doing what they think is best for them. Okay. So it, it, is, it more or less leads to that authoritarian style, the theory X. Because at the end of the day, you must move them on to achieve your objectives. Otherwise, your company or your organization will fall. It will not work. And then theory why managers, they also believe that, yes, employees enjoy their work. They always are self-motivated. They want to go the extra mile. They want to achieve both their personal goals and also achieve the organizational goals, win-win situation. They also think that, well, employees will also exercise self-direction, self-control, just opposite to what theory X is saying. And they also think that employees are committed to the objectives of the organization, provided you will always reward them and they all provided they can also realize that recognition of self-esteem, of their ego, okay? Now, they also believe, Theory Y also believes that, managers believe that, personal achievements are perhaps the most significant of these rewards. So employees would always put in their best to achieve that, okay? Again, Theory Y managers believe that the average employee learns under proper conditions not only to accept responsibility, but to also seek and look for opportunities where he can gain some responsibility to undertake his works. And again, theory why managers always believe or think that there is the capacity to exercise a relatively high level of imagination, creativity, thinking outside the box, and bringing in solutions to solve the problem. When I was working with KPMG, we have one of our core concepts, core values or principles. We say we seek the facts and provide the insight. So we're always always going out, trying to learn new IFRS standards and accounting standards or, or advanced or an alternative way of doing data analysis using Excel so that you can enhance your work. Come and teach your friends and then we all get the work done. So that's your why, the positive. They always look at positive. And so it always tend to foster a democratic style of leadership, participatory, bring your ideas. And at the end of the day, we will all move on, okay? Then we have um, Lewin, um, Lepit and White. Now, Lewin and uh, Kurt Lewin looked at a significant um, point, and he carried out a research in the 1930s. He's, he's a psychologist, actually. And then he came out with different effects that could be created by three different leadership styles, okay? So, the same thing, authoritarian, democratic, and the laissez-faire, okay? The same authoritative, giving the authoritarian, sorry, um, giving of, of, of orders, overseeing work, work activities. He will praise you when deal. He will blame you 
when do you okay high productivity is seen to occur but of course there will be some resentment discontentment or hostility from the employees then democracy bring in your ideas welfare is important let us participate let's work together to get the work done it improves some high level of communication motivation and satisfaction among the team and laissez faire i had a manager a leader who was <laughs> practicing this kind of style the laissez faire so he's he's more of do what you can do when you need help come i'll guide you okay let the group run its own show i will not micromanage you okay so it's a tendency to be standoffish be off like an outlier okay um, no involvement in team activities or welfare let the group run itself study suggests it was the least effective approach now you would also see some clever articles being published about lazy fair who talks of lazy fair being one of the most effective because it fosters innovation it talks of um, creativity you always have to think outside the box because your manager or your leader who is overseeing you has given you the right that be on your own think outside the box get some new facts and insights bring it to the group for us to operate okay a very effective laissez faire approach will be the situation where the leader will not leave you to run the show on your own without giving you proper direction at least there will be some consultation to tell you what you are supposed to do explanation explanation of the instructions of what you need to do before he sets you out on the loose for you to go and do what you you, you are doing but again he, he requires you to come back account and then he allows you i had one kind of a leader and it actually developed my mind helped me to develop some models for reporting audit reporting so the laissez faire approach um that's what um kate lewin taught actually did not work well then we have Blake and Morton's grid. Now, Blake and Morton, they developed the managerial grid and they said managers could be split into two or they'll be looking at concern for the task to be completed and concern for people. Okay, so the grid tries to mark them together. It says that the fact that I have less concern for you doesn't mean I have less concern for the production. Okay, so for the concern for production or for the services, for the task, for the for the activity, he says, we're looking at where leaders care about little about the people and operates in fear of something going wrong. So he's all interested much more in the task being done, but with little concern for the employee. It doesn't mean he doesn't care for the employees, but little. Okay, and then we have on the other continuum or on the other end where people are more concerned about the people, their welfare okay less than the productivity the tax being done okay and the continuum shows that normally those who can blend the two perfectly in the middle tend to 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 do better who can they blend it tend to do better now in the continuum blake and and martin realized that those with high concern for people but low concern for pro production are normally the country club we consider them as a the country club those with low concern for people low concern for production are the impoverished and those with high concern for production low concern for people they are the produce or the perish you either produce or you perish concern is for the production and again those who have high concern for people high concern for production they are the team leader blending them perfectly they are the team leader okay blending them perfectly they are always seen as the best middle of the road five five when you get it in the middle of the road 50 50 they are more or less a happy medium pushing them here and there pushing the work to be done and getting something along the line okay but if you are able to plug all of them at the top angle okay 1990 or 99 are the top quadrants top right quadrant the team leader that is the best okay all right again we also have contingency theories situational theories which was proposed by Adair, and then we also have Felder also proposing a similar one okay now let's start with Adair's own we'll continue with that of Felder in the next one so um Adair contingency theory like we mentioned earlier is looking at situational leadership okay 
we are looking at um, the situation will tell which one do we use which approach should i use which leadership should i use so here it tended to look at there tended to fix them into three he looked at an action-centered leadership where he's looking at the task needs of the person the group needs of the person and then the individual needs and when we are able to blend them perfectly the intersection of all these three produces the best kind of leadership okay now for the task needs or the task roles is typically talking of initiating the activity okay seeking the information diagnosing the problem on hand also seeking opinion from the group and evaluating these opinion pieces and making a decision the group task or the group role group group maintenance um, needs of of that leader is looking at encouraging them speak to them um arbitrate in times of disputes conflict management okay let there be peace calmness okay and set some standard that everyone can operate within everyone can abide by that's a group one and then for the individual maintenance role yeah it's talking of the fact that the individual is seeking the individual goals at the end of the day set a goal for them get some feedback appraise them along the line where you need to recognize recognize them if you want to discipline add, add some human touch to it train them develop their capacities okay counsel them and give them that or all that they need in order to grow combine all together and you get a total situation so the situation will tell me should i look at the task role or the individual concern the situation will tell me should i deal with the group motivational needs or should i just concern myself with just the task and the individual so that's Adair's proposal okay and it is quite an effective way his, his model stresses that an effective leadership like i said will lie in what the leader does to meet all these three needs the intersection of all these three is quite important okay it's relevant today and we can always apply it we want to wrap up with this okay so you can find this question on page 144 of the current book page 144 okay so it says that as part of your training you have been sent on a leadership development course your manager p has worked for bcd for over 20 years over 20 years as an accounts partner he's got a very sound knowledge and understanding of the different activities of the business processes okay now over the years he's demonstrated some fairness in how he manages staff he's liked well for his enthusiastic approach now he's decided that he needs to dedicate more time and energy managing the business okay and he's asked you to take over some leadership responsibility especially the role of you encouraging and leading the younger members of the staff now again he's asked you to think about the different types of leader at bcd whilst he's on the course okay now at this point during your time so far you have noted the following leadership styles from three of the partners okay one l treats his staff like computerized machines mechanical and he doesn't consider his employees views feelings or, amb or ambitions he doesn't jay will barely vacate his office no need of um, delegation he leaves his employees to get on with the workload themselves he doesn't care r gives and takes okay participatory she's very lenient not too coercive upon your return p has asked for a report on certain matters and then there's a report write a p to to write a report to p okay covering your definition of a leadership and um, describing the managerial grade and five extreme scores identified by blake and morton okay on the managerial grade relating what you have learned to the bcd leadership style and briefly explaining adverse action situational one on centered leadership theory okay and then explaining what you whether you feel one style of leadership is effective in all situations or it depends on the situation okay so this is where we we plug in for the second part okay and um, we will look at the last bit okay so we'll look at Felder's own in the next session and then we'll wrap up our recent our thinking on leadership and management. Thanks. See you, friends.